right, welcome back, Jax. Glad to see you again. We got a new week, a new opportunity to hear God's word and to study and find out more about how he has for us to live. I hope you've had a good week since last week. And as always, looking for an opportunity to see you next. So next time you have an uh, opportunity availability to be able to get to church, hope you get there so we can see you. I get to see Joy often. What's up, Joy? Joy. Uh, she's there in service, and I hope for an opportunity to see you too. So come on through. We're over at Burks Elementary, same service time as we had before here in the area. Uh, don't forget, sign up for our messages and quick text. Only send out a few text messages throughout the week, some reminders and encouragements and things like that. So if you want to be on that list, just send the word TAG, which is T-A-G-G, which is short for Teens are God's Gift. T-A-G-G, send that to our church phone number, 713-903-8533. All right, send that. You'll automatically be put on the list, and you'll be able to get those messages and reminders. All right, I think that's it. Don't forget, still trying to find out if we can have some uh, some of you, if you all are interested in another lunch hangout, we can still put that together. We can hook that up. Uh, for a Saturday or more likely on a Sunday. If you want to, if you'd be willing to do, if you'd be able to go to that, if you want to go to that, uh, just put down in the comments, yes, I want to do a lunch hangout, something like that. And you can also uh, reply to one of the text messages that I send out if you sign up for that. Or you can come to church and just let me know. That would be amazing. That would be great. <clears throat> All right. So this week is kind of part two. Of what I said I was going to talk about last week, it's the same, but it's different. It's the same difference. And so we're going to pick up where we were last week. So if you have your Bible, you can get it out. You can turn there. You can swipe there. You can tap there. Go to Matthew chapter 5. We're going to go back to Matthew chapter 5. Yes, that's where we were last week. We read one verse out of Matthew chapter 5. Then we're going to go to another part of Matthew chapter 5 to get a more full picture, a fuller picture of what God has for us to do concerning our place in the world. So for some of you all, if this is your first time, or if you're new, my goal and our goal and what we do through Tag Youth Ministry is try to find out how God wants us to live. We want to learn more about who He is, and who He created us to be, so that if we can be who He created us to be, man, life will be spectacular, it will be great, It'll be wonderful. So we need to find out more and more about his word so we can see how we're supposed to live. How should we think about things? How should we behave in certain situations? What kind of stuff should we celebrate and participate in? What kind of stuff should we stay away from? All that good stuff is what we talk about. So I'm glad that you're here. Thanks for taking this time out. It's an important time. You won't regret it if you do. If you don't think that this is an amazing time, completely worth your effort, I will give you 100% of your money back at the end of service. Oh, wait, it was free. You didn't have to pay anything, but I'll still give you all your money back. All right, Matthew chapter 5, turn over there. It's the first book of the New Testament, right? We're going to pick up kind of where we left off. Last time we looked at Matthew chapter 5, verse 13. Today we're going to start at Matthew chapter 5, verse 14. So Jesus put these together. Remember last time I said that these letters are in red, and that means that Jesus is speaking. So this is uh, part of a longer thought that he expanded on, which we don't have time to do in these videos, so we have to break it up and stuff like that. Um, and so as we look at this portion of the word, we'll see that it was together, but he has a little bit different emphasis. So last time we talked about being salt, salt being a preservative, salt bringing out flavor. We also, I didn't mention last week, but that part of the verse that says, if the salt is not doing what salt is supposed to do, it's good for nothing. It's worthless, which means if we're believers, but we're not living our life like believers, we're not having a believer's effect on the world, then we're not worth what God died what Jesus died for us on the cross. We're not worth what God intended for us to be worth because we're not doing what he intended for us to do. So don't be good for nothing. Be good for something salt in the world around you. We're also going to talk about the other thing we're supposed to do. Let's look in verse number 14. 
It says, ye, that means you. And of course, it's talking about me too. Ye are the light of the world. A city that's set on a hill cannot be hid. You cannot hide a city that's built on the top of a hill. Neither do men light a candle, light a candle and put it under a bushel. But they put it on the candlestick and it gives light to all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Now salt is a little bit less direct than light. Salt means you, you, you have a little influence here, a little influence there. You do things the right way, things like that. We're going to look at a little bit more direct thing that God wants us to do. And that is for us to be the light. Oh yeah, I got me a light over here. I have a light that can like blind you and blind the camera. I can pull it back a little bit. And that's what God wants us to be. He wants us to be a good old light. Now, there are a couple of things that he talks about here. One, he says a city that's set on a hill cannot be hid. All right, some of us as believers, there are times in our lives where we try to hide. We want to hide the fact that we're believers. We want to sit in the corner. We want to cuss and sound like everybody else. We want to walk and talk and dress like everybody else because we don't really want to look like a Christian because that might be cause for ridicule or it just might make us stand out a little bit or maybe we won't think maybe we think it won't allow us to have as much fun as we think we should have well God says the city that's set on the hill cannot be hid you Christian child of God you cannot hide your Christianity okay Peter tried to hide his Christianity when Jesus was being beaten and he was taken into the uh the secured by the Roman guards and there was that little girl said hey aren't you one of one of his followers and he said no I don't know him and he denied Christ three times before the rooster uh, did his thing <clears throat> and so uh, just I just want you to know that after you accept Jesus Christ you give your Lord to you give your life to the Lord there's no hiding all right they will see you, you might seem like you can blend in a little bit here and there but they will see you and God will see you. Uh, so don't waste your time doing that. But it also says, neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel. Now, if it was dark in here, which it's not, because then we wouldn't be able to make a video. Uh, but if it was dark in here and I needed to see, I could turn on my flashlight. And I could turn on the flashlight and I could, you know, flash it over here and flash it over there. And that would help me see. But should I turn this flashlight on and then put my hand over it? Well, that would be dumb because then it would block all the light. If it blocks all the light, it's not going to be good for anything. I have to move my hand from it and then you can see the light. He also says that, uh, you know, you put it on the candlestick, it gives light unto all that are in the house. Here's a pro tip, as they say. Here's a, a thing that you can do. If you're ever in a dark room and the lights are out or whatever is going on, if you have a flashlight, if you can just put that flashlight on a flat surface, and you turn that flashlight on, it'll actually reflect off your ceiling and it'll give you light in your whole room. You should try it one day. Go home. When you're at home tonight, get a flashlight, turn the lights off in your room and try it. If you have your flashlight like this, it's only going to put some light over there. It's only going to put some light over there. But if you turn it up and let it go and hit the ceiling, you'll have the maximum amount of light that you can get in that room. Give it a shot. It works great when you need it. Now, the Bible says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. We're supposed to salt the earth. We're supposed to add flavor. We're supposed to bring out things that God has already put in. That's great. We're supposed to help preserve those that are around, especially who have not yet accepted Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior. But we're also supposed to be the light. Part of being light is good works, because that's what he says. Verse number 16, let your light so shine before men that men may, that they may see your good works and they see your good works and your good works should cause them to glorify God in heaven. Well, how does that work? I'm glad you asked. Well, when we commit good works, what are good works? We help people that need help, right? We might give money to the poor. Somebody might drop something. They just need help picking it up. We hold a door open for someone. 
we help, we do good things. You know what good works are. If for no, if, if you can't think of what something good would be, think about yourself. What would you like someone to do for you? Yes, we would like somebody to give us $10 million and stuff like that. But really, think about some things that you would like people to do for you. And then think about how you can do that for someone else. That's a good start to get. That's a good start in the path of good works. So the goal is that we do good works. We have to do good works for people to see good works. But then the result of our good works should not be people praising us, but God in heaven. I'm sure you've seen that Christian or that person before. When somebody says, oh, good job, something, something, they say, it's all God, you know, something like that. Sometimes it might look cheesy or funny or why are they doing that? But it's true because people are supposed to see our good works and they're supposed to glorify God in heaven. Now, you don't have to put the finger up and look up. You don't have to say what other people say. You can do or say whatever it is that you want that will result in God getting the glory. So whether you uh, slip somebody some money and you tell them, you know, God loves you or God, you know, put it on my heart to give you this, whatever the case might be, you might volunteer at a place that helps, uh, you know, feeds the home, feed the homeless, or it might be, uh, you know, for around back at Christmas time, celebrating Jesus birthday, we did operation Christmas child and we were trying to get a bunch of stuff to put in, uh, shoe boxes to be given to kids that wouldn't be given a gift. You might um, uh, you might be involved in something like that so that people can be blessed. And so whatever good works you can come up with, whatever good works you can think about, whatever good works you have opportunity to do, that's what God wants you to do. The Bible tells us in another place that we're not going to turn to just for time's sake. But the Bible says that we're supposed to do good to all men especially those of the household of faith. So we're supposed to do good to or for everyone that we have opportunity, especially those in the household of faith, which means if you don't have the opportunity, like God doesn't expect you to give $5,000 to this person or this thing when you don't have $5,000, you don't have that opportunity, but you do have the opportunity to hold the door open. You do have an opportunity to put a dollar here to, to, to give a small thing there. So whatever good works you can think of. Now you might have to think about it. Well, what good, I mean, you know, we're not in kids church. You're old enough to know what type of good works that you can do. And then you also need to figure out a way how to give God the glory. It may be something as simple as bless you. You don't have to come up with a speech. You don't have to use a bunch of scriptures or a scripture. All you want to do is somehow deflect the glory to God. So when people are so thankful for your action, they're so glad about what you did or they just appreciate it. Now, you know, you don't have to hold the door open for somebody and they're walking through and they say thank you. And then, you know, they're still walking and you go, give glory to God. God wanted me to do this. God loves you. You know, you don't have to do that. But God will show us and give us opportunities and ways that we're able to glorify Him. Sometimes it may not be saying anything. Sometimes we may uh, do that good work and we may just not say anything. But we're letting our light shine before men by doing good. And there's a commercial. Um, I forget who it's by, but it says pass it on. And it basically shows you, um, you know, like four or five scenes that are laced together. And you'll see one person do something nice for this person. And then you'll see, you'll see person A do something nice for person B. And then person B will go on their way and do something nice for some other place for person C. And person C will think about what person B did and they'll do something nice for person D. And so they're saying, you know, pass it on. When we do something good, that gives other people an inspiration and an opportunity to do good to someone in their life. And God will be glorified in that. All right, so it's not like you have to make a speech every time you do something nice. It's not, you know, sometimes people won't even give you credit or recognize that you did something. But God wants us to be the light. He wants us to shine our light so that other people can see Him. They can give glory to God. They can find out more about what He has for them to do. Now, there is darkness all around us. There's darkness in the world. There's, you know, absolute Satan-influenced things we have an opportunity to also bring the light. 
So bringing the light is doing is good works, but we also have an opportunity of bringing the light by sharing God's word. We can share the hope that is in God's word, the love that is in God's word, all the great things about the life that we're supposed to live. We can share that with other people who are in dark situations or dealing with tough and dark times. And God will also be glorified from that. So again, don't want to take too much of your time because I appreciate you being here, listening, watching, doing what you're doing. So don't forget in the comments, you want another lunch hangout, let me know down there. We will make that happen, put it together. Sign up to get the text at 713-903-8533. Think, send the word tag, T-A-G-G. We'll get you on the list. All right, my friends, that's it. So glad to see you, tag. You're it.